Good afternoon, uh, Jim Dion from National Geographic along with Simon Jones from SolarWire International here for a webinar on how to use our geotourism website. You are all mooted, so if you want to leave me a message, if you just type in a message in the chat bar, then we'll get it from you. Um, if not, then I won't be able to hear you if you're trying to respond back. So thank you all this afternoon for attending the webinar. And you know, first of all, we really want to thank you for participating in the program, being content contributors, sharing what's so special about your sense of place. And really what has made this project successful is the opportunity for us to be able to share or be shared with you and from you the great story about your place, your sense of place, and your place-based authenticity. And so this project really never ends. We enter into a long-term relationship with the people of the U.S. Gulf Coast states that are part of this program. It's a living, breathing thing to manage a, a website with us. This content is dynamic. It can be updated. It can be added to. You feel free to be able to use it as you can to be able to promote yourself. And, you know, we encourage you to make it part of what you do every day when you support your program or your place or your protected area as a way in which to continually tell the story of your place. So I'm not sure that all of you have had an orientation into the program. So I'm going to start with a brief introduction here. So the focus of our talk today is how we can make our nomination shine, how we can use it to help to serve us and our, our place for the U.S. Gulf Coast states here in the geotourism program. And you know, our mission of National Geographic is to inspire people to care about the planet. Established in 1888 is a way in which to gather and disseminate geographic knowledge to inspire people to understand the importance of culture, geography, language, dance, music, all those things that make places special. So our mission is to use different media platforms in order to reach as many people as possible to be able to tell them the unique stories of places, whether it be, you know, the Palau Rock Islands, where my friend, this guy, Rodrigo, took me out to the World Heritage site and he told an incredible story. You know, the people that live on the Rock Islands have been there for an oral history that's over 5,000 years old. And as he explained to us, the people in the group were, a lot of the others were archaeologists, specific archaeologists, and you know they listened and hung on every word that he said. As he had this incredible insider knowledge of his culture, his sense of place, and telling his story through his eyes and through his words is a type of story that you can't get from any place else. Authenticity can't be parachuted into a place. Local knowledge can only come from the people that live there, and that's the philosophy behind our geotourism websites and all the media produced by National Geographic. So we create interactive media platforms that promote well-managed tourism and wise destination stewardship, working in some of the world's most important destinations to work with local people to tell those stories and then develop a long-term relationship so that we can help inform strategies that value the authenticity of places, that support our community economies, that support the micro, small, and medium businesses, that only can be, uh, only can, are best positioned to tell the story of their place. So our kind of leading principle or the guidelines for inclusion for information in our programs is geotourism, a definition uh, coined by Jonathan Turtolo in 2001, former senior editor for Traveler Magazine, is a way in which to set a, a mission statement for sustainable tourism for the society is tourism that sustains or enhances the geographical character of a place, its environment, culture, aesthetics, heritage, and you know, for me the most important, the, the well-being of its residents. If, if people in places don't see the value, and they can't benefit from preservation, conservation of their authenticity, of their culture, and their sense of place, then who else will value it? And you are the stewards of your culture, you are the stewards of your place, your knowledge, and how you share that story with people will help to direct the future uh, of your sense of place. And we've been working in this project. We've done 17 projects here over the last six years. We have four others underway right now, as far away as the Duro Valley of Portugal, the picture you see here, and the beautiful website, Discover Duro Valley in Portuguese and English, from which you can you know, see a place that maybe you've never heard of before, but yet has a unique and compelling tourism story, as unique and compelling as your story is. 
and all of these websites are cross-linked with each other, so people are looking for authenticity and authentic experiences while traveling, you know, which is a really good target audience for you and your place will have the opportunity to be able to visit and understand and know these other websites from these other places as well. So our program is inspiring travelers by telling the stories of places told by the people who live there. And you are the people that live there. That's why you're so important for this. And people that visit the U.S. Gulf Coast states, geotourism.com, see this as a story told by local people, you know, with, I'm going to say, the support of National Geographic and the expertise that we can lend and helping to edit and review and look at pictures and look at the way in which information is presented. But the core message comes from you. So again, Thank you so much for all that you did. I mean, over 1,800 points of interest from over 1,000 content contributors within the Gulf Coast. It was just an incredible response to outreach. And we're talking good, meaningful information that came out of this information that travelers can use to be inspired to travel to the place, to travel further afield from the default locations that sometimes are marketed to be able to look for a lesser known state or national park or a historic area or a musical event or eat a food that they haven't heard about before, or visit a town that they didn't know existed. And that helps to provide, I think, maximizes the visitor's experience so that they understand that places have many different places to go, many different things to do in a place. You can't visit the Gulf States just once. If you've been to Miami and you've been to New Orleans, you missed all the good stuff in the middle between those places. And that's what this is all about. So our website celebrates your sense of place using local knowledge. And you know, if we look up here in the right-hand corner of that local knowledge bar, we see a picture of Gray Brennan from Alabama providing local information, providing information that people also have confidence in. I, I think, you know, confiability is a big part of communication. And, you know, whether it be the St. Andrews State Park or the Theater Field Inn Bread and Breakfast or the Barrow House Inn or these, these things, these places that you see here on the home page, it doesn't come from you know, someone that was parachuted in there or some outside expert or self-proclaimed expert comes from the most important expert, which is the people that live there that can only explain those places as the way they explain them. Kind of other features that we see here on the homepage, as you know, we can order our companion hard copy map guide with some neat inspirational text from Jimmy Buffett. Um, we can download the, uh, the mobile uh, app so that People can travel around and not miss any of some of the great places that are along the way. But what's key to it is what's in those content boxes. When you click on St. Andrews State Park, the information that is on there that gives people the tools they need beyond the inspiration, but also the tools they need to be able to plan their travel to your place. I want to thank our program partners because doing this was possible because of all of these many hands that made it possible, certainly the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and National Park Service, were the first people that approached us. Our, we have a MOU that we've signed with the United States Department of Interior in 2008 that began this very special relationship with the Department of Interior and Department of Agriculture to look at geotourism as a way in which to help destinations better steward their sense of place and provide market access for a lot of the micro, small, and medium businesses that don't normally have the opportunity to co-brand with an entity such as National Geographic and be able to market themselves in that way. Also tying those community economies to protected areas and land management. And then along with the Department of Transportation that is our funding source managed through our partners at the Vernon Parish Tourism of Louisiana. And then of course, you know, last and certainly not least, the tourism offices of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida, who put the time and resources together to work with us to figure out how we best work with these communities. Again, doing community interaction means that we need people that have that type of local knowledge in order to impart that local knowledge, and then also helping us to see what's real, what's there, what's missing, what's what should be there that's not there, and how we want to tell that story in a compelling way. So all of these partners that made this project possible we certainly Bank. And then at the end, we have this rich content that inspires people to travel around the region told in different ways. We have our thematic content of the arts and music, culture, food, history, our outdoor and nature told you know, through local voices, Neil White writing some very, very inspirational text to the Gulf Coast states, and a welcoming, if you will, from visitors, whether they be from across the street or across an ocean, that 
want to visit some of these interesting 1800 or over 1800 points of interest here that we see on the main map that inspires people to travel to the region and gives them the tools to do so. And so as we look at our map, we see things like the Sweet Cane Inn and, you know, we get to meet Arlene Gould and we see this beautiful place that she has. It's geolocated. We see it on a map. There's pictures and we can see it on the big map. On the big map, we can look at the type of category that we're interested in seeing at that time. We can turn it all off and we can just look at places to stay or just food and drink or a combination thereof. So this becomes, you know, a way in which people can begin to connect the dots to build their own itineraries. And a lot of people, more and more free and independent travelers that are looking to travel further afield. And you know, the first thing that pops out for me when I see something like this, if we would go on Expedia right now, and we would start looking for places to stay in some of these places in you know, central Louisiana, I probably won't find the Sweet King Inn. I can find the Hilton Garden Inn, I can find you know, every four points by Sheraton that's out there and I can find any Applebee's and, you know, make a reservation and stay the night or go to dinner. But it's hard to find these kind of places. You know, where does the Sweet Cane Inn go in order to be able to look or be able to put themselves in front of that person that might be planning travel that's going to take place a week from now or a month from now is just doing research on where to go to be able to have a different experience, you know. And I think what's really important here is you know, the Sweet Cane Inn isn't well known as a Hilton Garden Inn or Howard Johnson's or a Hill Holiday Inn Express. You know, how do we capture the confidence of the traveler that if I invest my most scarce resource, which is my time, really more so than my money in a lot of ways, and I have two weeks for vacation, or I have this long weekend that I've been planning for for a long time, and I want to make sure that it's going to go off as well as it can. Well, it's easy to take the least risk as possible and just stay at your local chain hotel. But if I'm going to take a risk of the Sweet Cane Inn, I want to make sure that it's going to be able to deliver on that promise. And, you know, here we have a place co-branded with National Geographic, and that's a brand that I have confidence in that I've heard about. So maybe it'll allow me to mitigate that risk by seeing all the great information that's on here, being able to get in touch directly with the person that was the content contributor. Hopefully that content contributor will be able to answer me as soon as possible if I leave a comment there. And then I can interact. I can leave a thumbs up. I can uh, leave a comment. I can email Arlene Gould and get in touch with her about her place. And then if we look at the other nav here, I can see places that are nearby and, and places that are similar to it. So I can begin to use this interactive map to plan my travel and all the places that you provided to us. So the characteristics of what I'm going to call your landing pages of your all content contributors that are on here, you know, you're, you're all authentic and that authenticity is what sets this website apart from many other websites and ways in which travel planning and travel is exposed to the traveling public. Our, our leading criteria is its place-based authenticity that's provided by a local person, that provides rich information that connects travelers co-branded with National Geographic so people can look at this geolocated information and plan their travel to your place and we give them the tools to do that. So therefore that's our market opportunity and you know we hope that and I'm using Arlene Gould here as kind of an example during the day but the Sweet Cane Inn you know she can go in there when or whoever is involved with them and add new pictures we want to have you know new and dynamic content all our password enabled. You can always go into the back end of the site if your hours change, if your uh, your features change, if your pricing needs to be updated, especially if things need to be updated. You might want to stay on top of that and make those revisions directly on the site. Again, just like the site nomination phase before anything goes public or on the public part of the site, it has to be approved by the Geotourism Stewardship Council. Our spokesperson, Darian Mobley from Tourism Builders and LPTA and in Baton Rouge. If they have any questions, they get in touch with us and we have that kind of interaction to make sure that we have confiable information up on the website. But certainly, please you know, put an addition onto your place or something changes, make sure to update your web page. And if we have pictures that are rotating and more dynamic content, you know, people are more apt to want to come back and visit our websites. Um, and again, you know, you can't have too many pictures and too much information. I think this is a, you know, the Creole Nature Trail, All American Road in Louisiana's Outbrack. Um, you know, great video, great pictures, lesser known, if you will, kind of national park quality location that I've never heard of. But the 
there's all these great features and reasons that you would go ooh and ah and wow for yourself when you're on there as it's written here. And you know, you, you can't really have too much content and too much inspiration. And, and again, more and more, I think pictures really tell that story. And I would say, if on your landing page now you don't have a video, anybody can be a videographer now with, with a smartphone. You can take a, you know, a 30 second, a one minute, a two minute, just scan of your place or your park or your museum or your event, post it up there. It doesn't have to be a, you know, a James Cameron production in order for it to have value. People just want to see for themselves. And moving pictures tell so much of the story. And what I've been finding more and more looking at these, the quality of the production is not important as the uniqueness of the composition. You all have these very, very unique stories to tell. And that's what's so compelling about having a piece of video on your nominations. And so other ways that we can then use this information to bring it out is through Facebook and Twitter. We'll talk a little bit about uh, how you can, I'm going to interject Simon Jones here, I'm just going to talk a little bit how we can use Facebook and Twitter and blogging as well to keep up a dialogue. Right? If you're out there, the more that you're out there posting things, putting up information, then there's more distribution channels that you have for your place. And I, I know sometimes it's hard. We're sitting in a room and you know, I'm the sweet came in and I'm kind of whistling in the dark here and saying, hey, here's all these great things happening here this afternoon or here's what's going to happen this weekend in our town, in our place. There's people out there that are listening. You know, we do have visitors. We do have you know, people that are coming on to the Facebook page and checking the Twitter account you know, going onto the website every day. And, and I think building that dialogue takes place over time. It's something that we have to keep up at. So, you know, the more compelling information, the more interesting conversations and dialogues that we have going on, the bigger buzz we're going to build with this, the more people that are going to find out about it. Even amongst yourself, getting these dialogues going kind of helps us in the Twitter sphere and the blogosphere and on Facebook to be able to reach out to an ever-widening circle of audience of knowledge of this program and the process and who you are and how unique you are and the opportunity to be able to tell your story. So sharing your stories and pictures and events through the Facebook page, again, is another opportunity. And how can people do that, Simon? Well, I think, um, so hi, I'm Simon Jones from Tolomar International. Um, so we so on the Facebook page, it's uh, it's linked. If you're not, if you haven't already liked the Facebook page, um, on your Facebook account, if you just type in US Gulf Coast States Geotourism, you'll find the page and be able to um, connect up to it. But the goal of the Facebook page is to build on the stories that we already have on the website. So it's the, the website information you may update every month, every couple of months, every six months. The Facebook page is a way of telling your story today or this week. So if there's events, if there's activities, if there's new stories that you have that you'd like to share, with your community and with the community that we're building um, through the geotourism program, we we would love to have your stories and and, and thoughts and and uh, pictures um, about what you're up to, and we we we're, we're more than happy and we encourage you to share um, those on the Facebook page. So and anybody can post on the Facebook page. Anyone can post. You can um, the the. Best way is if you just send the message to the Facebook page that you have some content or a photo or other things, um, we'll post it up for you. Or you can share, if you have a story that you put on, for example, on your Facebook page, you can share it with our Facebook page. Um, so you can do it two ways. You can either contact us and give it to us or um, or share it from your website. And you know, it doesn't have to be long. You know, it's hard to write long. They can be short posts. You know, Pictures have, of, yeah. yeah, yeah. We have joined the Florida Orchestra on May 11th for a free show. Beautiful picture there. Just a few words, you know, explaining what it is. You know, and it can be very local. It can be, you know, your local barbecue place having a barbecue on a Friday night. And you know, these are things in big pictures. Someone from Paris, France, or Paris, Kentucky, you know, learns about and sees you know, a charming photo or a compelling event or something that's just so different, right, than, than their place. It's like, well, you know, we get about this city sometimes. That sounds really neat. And those are the type of stories we're trying to get out there. Um, how many people are visiting our Facebook page or Gulf States page? Well, right now, so it launched around the rollout, so about a month ago. We have, uh, this is a lot, so we have about 1,800 or 1,900 likes, uh, so uh, friends, as it were. Um, and we're continuing to grow that over the next um, uh, couple of, of months, and it will continue to grow as well. So those are people that have directly liked. 
then the reach is people that have actually seen the post. So as you see from that, at the bottom of that one, the Hidden Treasures campaign has reached uh, close to 70,000 people. So again, the success of this website will be over time, the content contributors, people from the region, posting information on there and keeping these dialogues going, keeping that information flow out so it's new and fresh and people can see all these neat things that are going on in the region. Then also, then there's Twitter. We can share your stories on Twitter. How can, how can we do that, Cyrus? Twitter's kind of the same thing. What I'd suggest, it just has to be a shorter amount of text and usually either link back to a website, like your, your own websites, or link back to the Facebook page. So um, the, the thing we'll use Twitter with is if you, if you provide, for example, a story or pictures or other things for the Facebook page, it'll, be, it'll also be tweeted on, uh, on the Twitter account. So it's, a, it's another channel to get the information out there. And then the blog. We also have a blogging function that is built into the site. And how can people use the blog site? So the blog, I mean, again, it's, it's kind of along the same lines. If you have stories that are more, the Facebook page is, is kind of real-time stories. So it's a picture, maybe a paragraph describing an event that's going on or other things. Uh, but if there's a more in-depth uh, story that you'd like to share about a specific place or about a a uh, three-day experience around the destination or or some other um, kind of longer form story. Again, pictures, videos are very important as well, but a longer form story. We can use the blog to um, engage travelers in, in more of a, a, a destination story about what's going on um, through the blog. The other way, the other um, thing with the blog is, is the search engine optimization. It's new content that we can target specific words for, specific search terms. So if people are looking for travel in the south or travel in the Gulf States region, um, the, the blog's going to have certain terms that will help to attract people to that rich content. So. And it's also neat if you have, let's say, an event or something that's mm -hmm. coming up. Let's say you're the Creole Nature Trail and you're going to have a birding festival in two weeks. Well, you can take that same picture that you have on your landing page, post it on the blog, or text about come visit our upcoming birding festival, get information here about it. And then it's in another distribution channel within the website. It's not just people finding your landing page, but also now you're part of the news, right? So it's, it's a way for you to kind of also jump ahead of the queue a little bit. Too. And I think sometimes as we use new media, as we build more social media into these websites, some of the first things that people are going to go to is a Facebook page, is a Twitter account, is the blog post, even before they go to the map. And then they're going to look at how this changes from day to day and it becomes part of their routine. So real important for us to be able to have this dynamic content, even if we're repurposing a lot of the content that we have. And then, of course, you can cross-link with the geotourism website onto your own website by downloading the tab. So, you want to extend the instructions? Yeah, there? this is, um, and feel free to contact us if you have questions about this, but the, this is a way of highlighting to your guests or your visitors on your website that you're featured by Nash on the geotourism website, and this kind of co-branding with National Geographic. So. Um, the, the newsletter um, email that you got last week um, has that um, JPEG or a couple of different versions of that, that uh, JPEG that you see on the screen um, that can be used um, and inserted onto your website. You can also log in. You can go to the, the US Gulf Coast um, geotourism page website itself, log in um, to your account, and on the left-hand side, there's, and you can see it there under documents, the, the, the example. Um, you'll see on the left hand side the link to place this badge on your website. And that's where you can download those, those badges. Every, it's, it's kind of hard to describe exactly how to upload it to your website because everyone's website is built on, are built on different platforms. Um, if you have a web manager, um, you can, um, you know, th they'll be able to do it very easily. Some websites, it's easy to do yourself. If you have questions, feel free to contact us and we can kind of help you through that process. Um, but unfortunately, there's no kind of three-step process to doing it. It just depends on your website. Great. And yeah. also, this can go up on your Facebook page. It can go up on other places as well. The, um, uh, in the chat here in the questions window that I'm looking at, someone wrote if we had a preferred hashtag 
hashtag can be used on Twitter, and I believe that's hashtag geotourism. Uh, hashtag um, golf. Sorry, I need to ask David that. Actually, it's little Twitter. Okay. Uh, well, David, can you add that to the? Uh, there you go. You just added it. Um, so what is geo? Oh, sorry, it's um, it's Gulf states geotourism. Okay, so hashtag Gulf states geotourism is the preferred hashtag. Yeah. And we're talking and talking with our hands and pointing a lot, which none of you can see. So <laughs> we'll try to fill it in visually, right? So now, getting back to you, how can you use your landing page in order to promote your particular business or your point of interest or the place where you're at? What are some of those features? Well, first of all, if you know, there's over 1,800 points of interest here. For me, one of the most important features of an individual landing page is if you see in the screen now, is having that contact information and that that contact information is correct. So if Jimmy Harris changes his website, if he changes his email address, if he changes his telephone number, please update it, right? Because that's very important for us that we have information that's up to date. But also, I think it's important that people want to see or know who is behind the Fear Field Bed and Breakfast. And that's what sets this process up apart from like a trip advisor. Right. TripAdvisor is opinions of people who we don't know, who we all don't know, who are giving you their opinions on what they like, and there's a certain value to that. But what we're telling the story here is what Jimmy Harris thinks of his business. And I think that's a, a real valuable piece of information. I know if I'm a traveler, how people present themselves and how they see themselves is very valuable information for me to see feel if I'm going to feel welcome in that type of place or this is what I want to do. And I'm not talking about, you know, things aren't bad or good, but is this going to help maximize my visitor experience? We can't account for taste, but, and there's many, many different tastes out there. So the information that's on your site that explains and shows to people, which is why pictures are so important, exactly who you are, are going to attract the type of people that are going to enjoy sharing your place or event or activity with them. So that's very important as we, you know, we keep this information up to date and very, very honest of who we are. Um, people, again, you can link back to your own Facebook page, your own Twitter account, so that you can, you know, people can also see you there. You can also add it to trip planners. You can also build itineraries for visitors. So if someone would get in touch with Jimmy Harris here at the Fairfield Bed and Breakfast and say, hey, I'm going to be there for two days. I'd like to stay there. What can I do around the area? Well, you can build a trip planner by taking and dragging icons from the map or from the places nearby or similar places or logging on to the trip planner and be able to help them recommended activities that they can do over those days. So we see this nearby places and similar places or other things that you might recommend to them. So you can encourage your visitors to use the site to explore the region and you can recommend to them places that you think they might enjoy seeing. You probably know a little bit about, you know, who you're, um, who your clients are. And I always believe that if we inspire more people, we're kind of floating more boats. You know, I think if you're a bed and breakfast or a restaurant, you're not really in competition with other beds and breakfasts and restaurants. People tend to stay at more than one place, eat at more than one place, go to one more than one park, see more of one museum, or do more than one activity in a place. It's building on that multiplicity of experience and opportunity that inspires people to want to spend more time in a place, come back, um, uh, recommend it to other people to go there. So the more that we can share this information, the better it is for all of us. And then makes it easier for travelers and you to answer their questions, right? So if we go into the, 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 the trip planning function, we're able to share with them other things that people can do there. Do you want to add anything to that? Um, just, I mean, just for the trip planner. So again, if you're, if you're a B&B or a site or, or attraction, you can log into the back end of the website, effectively where you created your nomination, and and build your own itinerary. So you, you have the ability to, um, and once you've logged in, it's it's um, there's a effectively a it's my trip planner. So it's kind of on the right hand side, um, and you can build your own itinerary. So if you know that there's a great restaurant down the road, a great national park, something else to do, some place to go and have uh, listen to music. 
Um, you can search for those on the website and then add them to your itinerary and build an itinerary that you can then share with um, with others. And I think there's an example that will come up with in a, in, in a minute um, that shows you know, multiple itineraries. You may have a two-day itinerary, you may have a five-day itinerary, uh, you might have things for kind of day trips for people to do, and you can build all of those different itineraries out and then have them all in one place to share with your clients. And you can put them into customized categories as well, right? Uh, you know, here we have all saved. That's everything that I've saved to the trip planner. Things to do near 2439 Fairfield Friday breakfast, and then Fairfield. Right, what you can do within the area. You could also do it for state or southeast Louisiana, however you want to parse that information so it's easy for you to use or easy for your client to use when you're using that information. So give an example here just to travel someplace else this afternoon. I don't know if you've ever been to eastern Newfoundland, but it's that island way, way, way up north here in north of Canada. You see the, uh, um, uh, the yellow rectangle around the Avalon Peninsula, which is the eastern part of Newfoundland. Um, Newfoundland's huge, it takes about 14 hours to drive across it. Uh, beautiful, isolated wayports, these small communities that were connected only by waterways. You could only get to boat to many, many of the, the what they call the outports along uh, north and uh, eastern Newfoundland until about the 1980s when they were connected by a road system. So therefore these communities grew up and developed in almost isolation in a lot of ways and it became very, very um, self-dependent. and uh, they have an incredible array of music and theater and arts and crafts and things to do because people needed to make their own music and have their own entertainment uh, and be able to do things to kind of keep themselves occupied within their communities. And what we found was the richness of the community experience makes for a travel experience that's different than many, many other places that you can go to. And again, there's also incredible nature that goes along with this. So, you know, people, place, nature, and community in a very isolated place that not a lot of people know about. So being able to tell that story and inspire people to want to go that far was really important for us. So one of the inspirational nominations that we got was from a woman by the name of Mariki Gao. And you see her picture here under Meet the Contributor. And her family owns the Artisan Inn in a town called Trinity, which is in the northern part of the Avalon Peninsula, which has about 40 year-round residents. Uh, in the summertime, there'll be maybe two or 300 people that live in the town. But this beautiful architecture, what they call the Salt Barks architecture, which is uh, typical for the region in which they've restored these three um, houses as a bed and breakfast. And she has on the site, again, some very compelling pictures and some great video. And that video changes. seems like whenever I go, go on here uh, that she has new and updated video. I also want to point out that there's a comment session. People can leave comments on your page. And if you do have an active web page in the Gulf States site, I ask you to go in there every once in a while and see if there's been any comments. If it's an unfair comment, it's something that we can take down. It's something that we can challenge or get in touch with the person. Um, if it's a very positive comment, it's like someone that wants to be answered by you. People can also put their thumbs up on the site. She has 84 thumbs up so far. She's uh, 111 likes on Facebook. And I did this quite a while ago. I imagine those numbers are up since I've taken that screenshot. And so those are you know, the features that she has in her web page. And I want to talk about pictures just for a second here. You know, this is a, a nice picture. You see the three buildings of the Artisan Inn and how you can stay there. It kind of tells you a little bit about what style it is. And it's some good information for planning. But when we put that first picture up, that's the one that goes up into the big window on the nomination page. And we want to kind of capture people's attention. You know, buried in our list is this picture. And this is an inspirational picture. This kind of gives me a sense of, you know, going to a place that's a little special and we want to leave with inspiration and kind of follow up after that with an informational type picture and again these inspirational pictures if they can rotate or change a little bit it makes our content more dynamic over time and then video music and other media also helps to tell your story uh, and again I'm going to reiterate having video on there will probably attract more people to spend more time on your web page and feel that they understand you and your place a little bit and just an example, I mean, that, that video was taken, if not by her, by someone right there, as they were just effectively walking on, along this trail looking at their town. So it's not, it doesn't have to be um, professional. 
yeah. and, and it doesn't have to be long. This video is, you know, two minutes of that. Three minutes is probably a good time. One to three minutes gives people a sense of what they're doing. But be as creative as you want. If you do want to do a little documentary of your place, here's your opportunity to become a filmmaker. Okay, and then getting back to that trip plan, right? And, and, and again, what we want to do is give people the tools to be able to travel to a place they might not know that much about and that where you are the source of that local knowledge and we're giving them that opportunity to communicate directly with you and unlike a traditional map that gets you from point a to point b we're looking at creating a journey right about the geotourism map finds what's in between those points and those things that i can do to be able to put together that compelling experience and you folks are the entry point to that interpretation for the potential visitor to the place and so that's how your, your business can benefit from this site, by helping people to understand the totality of the experience that's around them and give them that content that exists on the site that explains to them, you know, that you're the artisan in and why you're a great place to stay and nearby or you can get to from there to go see the puffins at Elliston Point and find the guys that can take you to be able to see the puffins in a reliable way and be able to do so in a way that's going to maximize your experience. And the, and the itinerary builder is a great way of just explaining it. you as this, in this case, the artisan in, your recommendations of what to see. There may be 50 things in your region of the Gulf states to go and see, but you recommend these top 10. And so then we can begin to package experiences for travelers using you as the point of departure and complete the circle. It was interesting when she did this, she said, you know, the Two Whales coffee shop wasn't on the website, that they hadn't uploaded anything. And that people were looking at, okay, after I spend two days at the end, I'd like to go someplace else for breakfast. She recommended the Two Whales coffee shop. So she went to them and she helped them to upload their content so she would have someplace else to send her customers to. So then they become part of this circle. And then you go to the town of Port Union, which you can see there, then the Buena Vista Peninsula, which is a really incredibly beautiful place, the root cellar capital of the world, and it's always nice to go to a capital of the world, the puffins at Elliston Point that you can always see there. And then, of course, if you're going to go to the root cellar capital of the world, you might as well end your day having dinner at Nancy's Root Cellar Kitchen before you go back to a comfortable night at the Artisan Inn. And if you think about packaging days like with, you know, and it's usually building an itinerary is what I call kind of a, a bed and breakfast sandwich. You know, you start off where you are in the beginning of the day, you have to eat breakfast somewhere, then you do your morning activity, then you have to have lunch somewhere, then you have your afternoon activity, then you have to have dinner somewhere, then you want to do something at night. And you think of terms of just kind of layering on days to day among different things that you can do, different places that you can go, you know, usually activities, those two to three to four hour activities, in between kind of the way station and that can really do a service for people that want to visit your area and make it easy for them to do so. If it's hard to do, then it's not a vacation. If we can make it easier for them, people are more apt to want to be able to go to your place. And so packaging those experiences in compelling ways is another way in which to help to market the other points of interest that are on the website and add value to what we're all doing. And then again, it can all be saved to the, to the trip planner. So, you know, we hope to see is these type of interactivities where someone might get in touch with you and so that you know, they'll say, on my trip planner, I have these things saved. I noticed that the Fairfield Inn is in my day two. What else can I do around Fairfield? Um, and I have some questions about it. If you can help answer those questions or drop some uh, recommendations into their trip planner, then you're helping them to build their itinerary to visit your region. And then you can share these experiences. Do you want to explain how that works? So yeah, this is more, I mean, again, this is kind of cross-linking. So once you've created these different packages, and in this case, um, she, she had different kind of options, different categories that she had created. Um, but she had the, for example, the one, the one circle there, these are her May trip possibilities, the different um, activities. So here she can send that link to a client that has asked her, you know, I'm coming up in May, what would I like to do? She sends that link to, um, to the, the client and they can go directly to um, her link, obviously, it's listed in there as well as all the other activities and places to eat that she recommends. But then they can also then say, well, okay, I'm, you know, I'm not that interested in this. I'd like to add something else and, 
and can kind of play around with it. And then as she was building these out, you do the same thing. You could do, you know, music, food, uh, things around Vicksburg, Mississippi, uh, nature activities around Vicksburg, Mississippi. If there's something that you would like to recommend that's not on there, you can make a nomination for it or get in touch with someone that might be there, you know, and say, hey, you know, I think you have a really neat restaurant here in, in, uh, in Tupelo, Tupelo, <laughs> Tupelo, Mississippi or Montgomery, Alabama, and I'd like to recommend it to my clients on the geotourism site, but it's not there, right? So this is a way for us, for you to help us to add new content onto the website so that it becomes a more effective tool. So if you think about this for trip planning, and again, you know, this is great information for visitors to have because, you know, things to do in that area becomes kind of an insider's guide of what's there to do there. Yeah. And then the other thing you can also do is add that, again, just like you can add the link to send to your clients, you can add that link to your own nomination page so that you could add that in the, um, in the content to say, yeah, this is what I recommend if you're in my area. Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> And so here's a list of all these experiences that can be shared, the links, and then also bundled into different categories that can be sent out to people. So, I mean, you can put as much time as you want into this, but it's certainly an opportunity to use this tool. And again, you're free to push out your nomination to your clients as well. Mm -hmm. So it's about sharing your stories through the website and using the website to help inform others. And these are the tools that we have. We have the website itself, we have the trip planner tool, and we have social media, we have the comments function, and then we have a way for people to get in touch directly with you. So we have these different communication channels to distribute your opportunity. And it really starts with you. It's one of those things, the more that you throw out there, the more that might come back. If you're just sitting on your landing page waiting for someone to come to you, it might be harder for them to find. But the more active you are in sharing this information and pushing it out to other people, then you know the more opportunity you have for other people to be able to find it. So what's what's next? Um, we have our summer in the South promotional campaign. You want to talk um, so this yeah this is um, something we're finalizing the details on this month but it'll launch in June. Um, and we'll highlight kind of activities and itineraries. It's kind of, kind of similar to what we've just been discussing. It's, it's ways to travel in the region with the goal of getting people or informing people um, about driving them to the website, driving them to the Facebook page, and informing them about here's, here are the great things you may not have known about that you can do in the region. And then we also have um, coming up on June 11th, so give or take four weeks from now, um, uh, another webinar. So the, the one today, which we hope to be useful, has been more about specifically the geotourism website and, and the tools um, within the program and how you can benefit and use those to, um, to the greatest possible extent. The next webinar, which will be a similar kind of format in terms of online and, um, and over the phone, um, will be on June 11th at uh, the same time and we'll focus on social media tips and tricks so this is more how you use your social media and online platforms to um, kind of best practices to promote your own website to promote your own uh, or engage with your own facebook community and things like that and that's it. And that's it. Thank, and you. It, um, Thank you. If you have any questions or comments, right, I ask if you can get in touch with Darian Mobley at Darian at tourismbuilders.com. She's kind of representing the Stewardship Council. And then, you know, we're in contact all the time. She gets in touch with Simon and I, and we can kind of manage the, 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 the information highway here. We thank you so much for your time and your effort to make this project possible. Again, without your content, we would have a really nicely designed website with not very good information in it. What we have now is a great information website that we can use to inspire people to think about the U.S. Gulf Coast states in a little bit different way, uh, get off the beaten track, go to those small communities, visit those smaller places or lesser known places, go to those micro, small and medium businesses that are providing authentic experiences, and uh, hopefully create benefits for, for all of you. So thank you for your time, and we look forward to seeing you at the upcoming uh, webinar in June 11th.